Public art is not just here to brighten up our urban landscape. It's designed to inspire connection between cultures, to spark conversations. And in Elizabeth Key, it's innovative and has a real wow factor. So if you download an art walk map, and I'll pop a link up on our Facebook page, you can do a DIY walking tour of all the public art that's here in Elizabeth Key. And being the rebel that I am, I'm gonna start here in the middle, actually. It's just because um, it's closest to the ferry where I just came off. The roof of the terminal is also an artwork titled Four Winds. It could be clouds, it could be puffs of smoke. There's actually two themes at work here, the sky and transportation. And this piece was designed specifically for this space. Remember I said public art is supposed to provoke a conversation. Well, when this statue was unveiled, it certainly did just that. It was front page news, it was talk back news. As people tried to work out what it was and what it meant. It's called First Contact. And on this occasion, I've happened across Elder Walter McGuire, who's full bottle on this particular piece. So when we get to this uh, public art here, the big, the big silver bird, I ask people to reflect, visualise in their minds what it would be like seeing a big boat coming up the river uh, with two white sails on it, and at the time there's nothing in your world view other than a bird sitting on top of a big boat with its wings flapped out. It reflects the big white sails. On the other side of the footbridge, which is a work of art in itself, another Indigenous story, this one from the Dreamtime. How did the black swan come to be? Then there's the tale of Bessie Mabel Wishby, a huge defender of civil rights and conservation during her lifetime, and she was very passionate about the Swan River. The public art at Elizabeth Key, or Betty's Bath, as some locals like to call it, is nothing if not eclectic. Like the piece beside the bell tower, which has hundreds of thousands of past school student signatures etched in copper plate. The blade wall showcasing emerging indigenous artists, and this one, 29 metres high, but it certainly doesn't block any views. And have a look at how it frames those who come up for a closer look. Its name, Spanda, means to move a little. It was designed using 3D modelling software. Think movement and waves of activity. Or you could make your own interpretation. What do you think this sculpture is? I think it looks like a white swan. Yeah? Actually, it looks like two swans. Yeah. And they are Kissing. It just reminds me of the wave rock. It looks like a rainbow with the various loops and you can look through each individual loop. It gives you a different perspective of the buildings from the left and right through. At horizontal geometries, mosaics represent the riverbed submerged and winding. And my favourite piece of public artwork down here in terms of how interactive it is, has got to be this one. On a hot day, this is a great place to cool off and have a bit of fun. If you look at it from a little higher up, you see the story of the Noongar Six Seasons and the dreaming story of the Milky Way. There's been quite a few million dollars poured into the public artwork down here at Elizabeth Quay. Has it been worth it? Does it engage with visitors? Does it enhance our urban environment? I think it does, but remember, all art is subjective. You know what else though? It's definitely a great way to spend a day in our city.